Alright, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. In this one we're going to be working on some VHS animations. It's kind of simple um, geometry, like simple basic geometry animations. And um, this was actually a request by Deep Zen Pulse. Uh, so he's a, an Instagrammer follower. And um, yeah, he asked me to um, make a tutorial on this. So uh, I thought these uh, looked very, uh, like, very interesting, and I've been wanting to get into like the simple animations and touch designer for quite some time. So this was a great opportunity. And um, so what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm going to split this video in two. So on in this video we're going to be working on these four animations here, and in the second one we're going to be working on these, but the second one I'm actually only gonna um, make available to patrons. So if you want to watch that, become a Patreon, a uh, patron. And um, yeah, so these four ones, the ones we're gonna be working on in this video, are just going to be using tops. So um, they're not running very fast right now, so just 10 FPS. But that's because it's eight times uh, 1920 by 1920. Uh, sketches, so it's quite alright. Um, so I'm just gonna dive into the first one, and I'm gonna sh just explain you the basic concept of it. So we uh, we have a basic uh, channel he animation here, um, which is uh, driving a couple of things. So uh, we're uh, driving this rectangle there in the background. So this yellow rectangle that's just moving up and down, or like rotating around. And then we have two uh, rectangles and two circles uh, that seem to be uh, kind of morphing or like transforming into each other. And then at the end we have this, like if I just bypass this, uh, we have this uh, kind of grain FX um, comp that I'm going to create with you and that we're going to use for all of these sketches. And that's just going to, you know, add a, a bit of um, texture to the whole thing. So it looks a bit more interesting. Um, yeah. <coughs> so I'm just going to copy paste this. And dive into here. And just delete everything. All right, so I'm going to start with the rectangle in the background. And I'm going to make that two by one and um, shift it down uh, by 0.5. So it's in the center. Also, I want this resolution to be 1920 by 1920, as I just said. And I'm going to change the fill color to some kind of yellowish nice uh, color. <laughs> and um, also, that's it. <laughs> and, uh, whoops. God damn it. So now I'm going to add a null here. Call this BG as always and turn the display on. And um, now we can add a transform here. I'm going to actually leave that away for, for a second so we can see better what's going on. Um, so this is just a basic setup. I'm actually going to add a transform here because we're going to need that to rotate it. <coughs> All right. So. Um, what we're going to do now is create the basic channel for animation. So I'm, we're going to do that using a pattern chop. You could technically al also use an LFO, but I feel like you have more control here. Also, one thing I've set my uh, length, like the length, the frame length of my project to 200. As you can see here, it's just going to 200 and then starts again. And um, so I'm going to set this to 200 as well. And I'm going to change the type here to um, square. And um, yeah, attach this to a null here. And actually put a time slice here. Because, uh, uh, like with an LFO, you wouldn't need this. But um, here we, we, like, here in the, the pattern, we have like 200 samples now. And with the time slice, we just have like one of those samples being shown at the um, 
corresponding frame that we're at. If that makes sense. So um, I'm going to add a math here and just show you something quickly. So um, if you go to the transform, I wouldn't use this rotate here for some reason. It, like it doesn't work as well. Like it doesn't line up as perfectly. I just noticed while recording the last time. Um, here on the rotate. Now, if you put this to like like twenty, um, then that's kind of the rotation that we want, and minus twenty as well. So you can see now it also uh, like you can see the edges here. So I'll just put the scale to two on both of them. Now I'm gonna put this back to zero and um, change here on the math. Math. We wanna change the ranges. So um, here on the pattern. Um, we you can see the the ranges between minus one and one. We could either change it here from like like change the amplitude to five and the opposite offset to point five as well. So it's going to uh, zero and one, or we could just change it here to like minus one and one, whatever floats your boat there. So now we can change this to minus twenty and twenty. Um, actually, for this uh, example, because I'm just used to that, um, I'm going to leave it as that and change it to minus 1 and 1. Then I'm going to add a rename here and call this rotate and add a null to this. Alright, so now we can use this rotate um, channel on the, actually on the transform rotate. And now you can see it just kind of goes between one and the other. So <clears throat> I want to have a smoother channel. So I'm going to add a filter here to smooth the channel out. And now you can see it's smoothly going from one to the other. So I can add a trail here so we can uh, see the animation curve uh, more, more well. So it's like smoothly going from one to the other. And if we look at the example here, then you can see it's kind of like fast and then getting slower and then fast getting slower. And that's kind of the the animation here. So we want to recreate that, of course. So here it's just going uh, like smoothly from one to the other. So we can change this now like by adding a lag after the time slice. Um, well, as you can see here, actually, like if you just leave a uh, filter, uh, like the time slice on, then it does this by itself. You could also um, turn that off and add the time slice or just add the lag. I think it's be best to, to just have the time slice there. There's no, no confusion there. Also, you can kind of see better what's going on here. All right, <clears throat> so now on the lag, we can. Uh, I'm going to change this uh, uh, lag value here to like 0.7 and just have a look at what's going on here. So this uh, this curve is changing. So we're like exactly doing that. What I just uh, said. We're like going fast to like one and then just getting nearer and nearer to the to the destination value in a way. And the same just by going up. So it's it's a nice smooth curve happening there. Alright, so we're not going to need that. We have our curve uh, set up now. What we want to do now is add a circle, or actually two circles in a second. So this circle, I want to have the same resolution as the rectangle, so I'm going to go to the rectangle, right click on here and say copy parameter, and do the same here, and say pass reference. Now I want the radius to be point uh, 11 on both of them and also I want the center to be minus 0.2 and we're going to change this uh, the, the, the Y center here um, with the animation in a second so I want the fill color to be um, black and um, that's it so what I'm going to do is just uh, copy paste this, drag it down here, and change this to like pause for position. And on the math here, I'm going to change this to like minus point, like, yeah, minus point three and point three. So 
so um, that's kind of like that's the the value range that we want to have this move around that. So um, I'm gonna just drag that on here, say shop reference, and now you can see this circle here is moving <laughs> with um, like you know based on this animation. Uh, all right, so we can now um, we can now composite that in here. But first, I'm gonna just copy paste this and. Um, take the minus away so it shifts to the right and uh, also I'm going to just put a little expression here saying times minus one so it just inverts this value so it's just now going up instead of down when, yeah you know what inverting means <laughs> so um, now what I'm going to do is add a comp here a composite top and um, change the operation to over and take this and put it there all right so um, I want to yeah I want to change the the um, like input order here so that the the yellow rectangle is at the very bottom so it's uh, in the background um, what we also want to do because as you can see here this is going uh, like into the what's gonna be the black area in the background so um, we want to like if we want to change the colors or something um, we want this to be cut off by this edge so what we can just do is put a multiply here and just multiply this by um, by, by by the thing here <laughs> at the rectangle <laughs> so I can just copy paste this and do the same here and put that in there so <clears throat> now as you can see this is being cut off nice and smoothly and we're happy alright so what I'm gonna do is just copy paste this and uh, right click on here and say change comp type and now we can make this a rectangle and just gonna call this rec1 and um, now we don't have to change everything again so we can just change the size to be 0.2 um, and we want the fill color to be some sort of reddish color or maybe something like that, I don't know um, okay so I'm just gonna actually make this minus so it's the same as up there and then take the minus here away so we have two rectangles um, they're the same color and everything perfect so now we can just copy and paste this that in there and now put these in there instead okay so now you can t see two things so first uh, the animations aren't right so I want to take this one away and um, actually wait I'm confused so this one away and actually this one was right oops no, <laughs> wait. Ah, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is the way, way uh, I want this to look. So now we need to do the same thing with uh, cutting off um, the rectangles. But now what we're gonna do? <coughs> uh, we can just again use this. Um, but as you can see now, it's being uh, like done the wrong way around. So we have the same thing as the black ones. So they're like um, being shown only on the yellow part. So what we can do simply here is uh, drop a mirror inside, uh, like between the transform and the multiply. It's a bit of a mess. Sorry for that. And then the mirror, we can change this pipe pivot to zero, rotate to ninety, and turn both both of these on. So now. We haven't exactly mirrored um, rectangle, so now the red ones is only are only showing up there. Uh, well, actually, we need to copy paste this and drag it in there. And something's not ah yeah, we need to change this as well. All right, so this is a bit of a mess. 
Um, what's basically going on here? We have like two circles that are like uh, that. There, these are all driven by the same um, same channel there, uh, which is mapped between minus three and three, and we're just always mapping that on the y axis. So it's going like up and down, and um, we have one circle on the left, one circle on the right, same with rectangles, and they're all just like we're just always inverting this um, this value so we can yeah so they're kind of like mirrored and doing what they're doing here <laughs> um, also then we're like <coughs> multiplying both the circles um, so they're only showing like multiplying w with the with the yellow background so they're only being shown when they're on the on the um, you know, <laughs> on the yellow background. <laughs> and also we're doing the same thing with the rectangles, multiplying in, but uh, with a mirrored, uh, with the mirrored rectangle. So um, yeah, they're sh being shown at the exact other side of the, of the rectangle, you know. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, so we have that going on now, so that's cool. Uh, I want a black background, so I'm going to add a transform here and change this to one and turn this on. So now we have a black background. And um, so this is the basic setup, what we have here. And um, what we can do now is just, uh, yeah, what we're going to do now is make this grain FX. So this is going to be a, a base component, but um, I, uh, I'm going to first make it in here and then make it a base. So I'm going to add an add here and actually add another add because it's so much fun to add adds. And um, what I'm going to do here in the first one is add a bit of like this. I'm going to just show you what I'm going to add. <laughs> so uh, as you can see there's these small um, sparkly thingies there that kind of look yeah grainy thing is there um so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna add sparkly grainy thingies that's what i'm gonna do and um i'm gonna do that by using a noise and go to the rectangle here say copy parameter and also pass that in here so we have the same resolution it's always important but we're actually going going to change this in a second it's still going to be the same resolution, obviously, but we're going to change that in comp. Anyways, so on the noise, I'm going to change the period to 0 0.05. Uh, the exponent exponent to like uh, 3.5. And um, so it kind of looks like this. And going to move make this move uh, on the z-axis of apps time dot seconds. So now it's moving like this. Looks pretty trippy. Um, and now I'm going to add a function uh, top here. And on this function top, we're going to go to the RGB and use uh, this pow x with input um, exponent here. I, I don't know how it's called in English. Um, so we're going to change the exponent value here to 15. And uh, there we go. Now we have this uh, beautiful, rainy noise, uh, sparkly thingies. And uh, I'm going to add a level as well. And change the opacity to something like 0.2. So it's really just subtly there in the background. And then we can just add it here. Which I'm going to make this less subtle so you can see it better. There we go. Now we have sparkly thingies there. Now I'm going to just... Um, copy paste this and uh, change this to random um, and also at a level change this to 0.2 and add it here as well all right so um, maybe more like 0.15 all right so there we go now we have um, sparkly grainy thingies and normal grainy noise I'm actually going to change this back to like 0.2 and now it's very subtle 
and uh, if we just bypass this you can really see the background really like it's subtle but it really makes a difference so now if we <coughs> now if we uh, select all of them and right click anywhere else and say collapse selected it's going to be a a base that you can now reuse if you put it in your panel somewhere um and I'm going to call this grain f f x if i could write jeez all right <clears throat> now i'm going to go in here and what i uh, just said you know that we're going to change the resolution here the resolution so we want to use the resolution of the in here cuz um yeah, it's the easiest way, I guess. That's that's why we do that. So I'm gonna just type in op um, uh, in one. So we're referring to this, and then just point width, and um, the same with the height. Now we're just grabbing uh, the resolution of the input and using it for our noise, and we need to do the same thing here. And there we go. <laughs> so now if we change anything there, it's going to be the same size here. So now we can just bypass this and, you know, use it for the other sketches as well. All right, so this is the first part. And I just noticed it's actually not right. <laughs> um, so we need to... Wait a second, so we need to change that and that. There we go, <laughs> Jesus, so I didn't notice that. So um, now it's the right way. Really just change the, the, the X values here. All right, so this is it for the first part. All right, so we're gonna go get to the second part now. So I'm going to just copy paste this and um, dive in it in, like dive into it and um, so just simply explaining what we're doing here so we have five circles and um, they're moving as you can see here um, all in the same directions but kind of um, you know at different um, phases and at different like amounts and then we're just compositing them together adding some post effects so this is a lot simpler than before all right, so I'm going to add an LFO. Uh, this time we're going to work with an LFO because we are really just working with a sine wave. I um, want this to be a bit slower, so 0.3. And now we can add a math here. And on this math, I'm going to change this to minus 1 and 1, and then minus 0.2 and 0.2. So this is something we're going to change in a second. Whoops going on now all right and um, I'm gonna add a null here as well and a circle top all right so <coughs> a circle I am going to make that like 1920 by 1920 again and um, all right so we're gonna change the radius to like uh, 0 0.15 and um, we're going to change the center in a second. All right, so I'm going to copy paste this five times. Actually, we don't need this one because the one in the center is just going to stay at the center. And now we're going <coughs> to just map these two different values. So we're going to change this to minus 0.1 and 0.1. And now we just uh, invert this so we have 0.1 and minus 0.1 and here we can also just invert this so the zeros doesn't really don't really matter all right so what we can do now is um, use these on all the centers so we're moving the circles around <laughs> all right so as you can see this is working pretty well and um, I'm going to, yeah, um, 
you could technically color each of them individually, but uh, a nice way to um, to get a, a, a good looking color gradient is to simply make them uh, like different shades of, of uh, white or gray. Um, so we're just gonna gonna change the fill color down a bit. So like the first one is gonna be one here and then like 0.9, so it's a bit gray, then like 0.8 and 0.7 and 0.6 so they're all like slightly different shades of gray and now I'm just going to use a composite here just like in the other example and um, set it to over again so now we can just put all of these in here and then we have these circles lying on top of each other so um, because we have like a uh, like these shades of gray, we can now use a lookup to color them, and uh, like a ramp and a lookup. And this is always a nice way. I love love this combination of lookup and ramp to color stuff. So now we can just uh, you know put like a sort of darkish red here, and like a brighter red here. And then like a yellowish orangey kind of color here. And now we now you can see you get this gradient. Now you could also put like a yellow, uh, like a blue or like a something in here. Um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't actually work out that well. But technically, you can, you know, make uh, very cool gradients with this sort of technique. And um, what we can just do now, zoom out here, and zoom back in here, and just copy this. And zoom back in here. And now we can paste this in here, and add an all, call it BG, and turn this display on. And because we have this grain of X that we made in the uh, first example, we now instantly have this nice grainy look on it. So, yeah, this is a lot uh, faster and simpler than the other uh, example, but I um, think it also looks very pretty. Okay, so we can just get to the third one. All right, so for the third one, we're going to, um, I'm going to copy paste this again and uh, dive in here and we have a pretty similar concept uh, as before so we have uh, like rectangles instead of circles now and then we're just compositing like we're, we're moving that them at different uh, speeds or like phases uh, compositing them together and then we have like uh, the same as before so like a lookup and a grain effects and yeah all right so i'm just gonna do like because we just did that um I'm going to delete just this and turn the display off for a second. All right, so I'm going to start with an LFO here and um, change the frequency to 0.3. And I want this to be a square. So I'm going to add a null here and uh, add a trail to that so we can see what's going on with the, with the channel. So for now, you know, as a square, it's just going like up and then down, uh, you know, like just just very like instantly up and then instantly down, and it just stays there for the same amount. So um, first, uh, in this example, I'm actually going to map this to like um, minus uh, like one and uh, zero and one. So. I'm going to change to here like the amplitude to minus uh, to 0.5 and 5. So you know now it's just between 0 and 1. So now what we can do here, because you can, as I just said, this is just the same lengths up and down. And with the bias, we can change that. Because um, if I just go back here and show you the example, this is um, they're like all rotating quickly and then go rotating back and then staying there and then again doing the same thing so um, this is kind of what we're trying to achieve with this so like the, the motion that we want to achieve with this so 
I'm just going to type minus 0.5 here. And now, as you can see, it's just going up shortly and then straight down again and then staying there. So we want to smooth this out as well because we don't want to have this like go up straight and down straight. So I'm going to use a filter again to do that. So with the filter, we now have the, the smooth signal. So it's going to down, then shortly up, and then again, it's down. So now I'm going to add a math here and map this to minus 20 and 20. And as you can see, this this adjusts here. So this is now between minus 20 and 20. And um, we don't need this trail for now anymore. Um, now we're going to add a rectangle top and um, change this resolution again. So what we can also do, uh, what I'm going to do now is change this to like 1 and 2. And we're going to drive the rotate uh, in a second again. So I'm going to change the center here to my uh, 2.25. So it's shifting a bit to the right. And I'm going to change nothing else here. Just use this channel now to, uh, we can actually, you know, just for good sake, if you can say that, <laughs> uh, I'm going to change the, the name to rotate so it's clear what it's doing. All right, then I'm going to put that, put that in there. And um, now, as you can see, this rectangle is already doing the motion that we want it to do. So now we can just take all of this and copy paste it three times. So we have four rectangles. And now we need to actually remap these on here because there are going to be different values. So we need the, the right channels. All right. <clears throat> so now if I press pulse, as you can see, they're all the same. They're all like uh, doing the same motion at the same time. So we want them to do the same motion, but not at the same time. So what we can do is just change the phase here. So I'm going to change that to minus point 0.1 on this one, uh, minus point 0.2 on this one, and mm, minus point 0.3 on this one. So now if I press pulse, you can see they're all going just one after the other. You can see it nicely on the filters here. All right, so with, we're done with the motion. Now I'm just going to shift this uh, to like point 0.55, point 0.85, and like 1.15. And now I'm going to change this fill color here to point 0.8, this one to 0.6 and this one to 0.4 and now we can just uh, take all of them in here this is a comp set to, to over to over and um, if I just display uh, turn display on we can now only see one um, rectangle though that is because um, they're like uh, on the wrong order so this one is being in top uh, being put on top of all of these and this one is just put on top of this and so what we need to do is um, put the fourth one at the top the third one is as second and you know the second one is third so now they're all like in the same um, order like in the right order and then again we're just using a lookup here to change the different uh, shades of gray to a color and a grain FX, like the grain FX base um, com component that we made earlier. So yeah, that's it for the third one. All right, so the final one um, is a bit different. Um, it's using these rectangles, or it's like made of these rectangles, or something that looks like rectangles. It's not actual rectangle sops. Um, that are like getting smaller to the sides and they're like kind of just they, they seem like they're moving to the to the right or they're actually I guess they really are moving to the right <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna again copy pasting this and um, dive in here so the concept is that we're using uh, ramps and a threshold to um, change the size of these uh, rectangle looking shapes and um, again this 
uh, post effects that we had before. So I'm, again, I'm gonna le leave that. Um, so like, yeah, I don't have to do it again. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna turn the display off again for a second. So what we uh, need to start with is a ramp. Um, and on this ramp, we want to have like a bit of gray here. I'm going to show you like a bit of brighter gray there. I'm going to show you how to like play with this in a second. And um, what we also need to do is change the period to 0.12. Found that to be a nice value. You can change that as well though. And we want to change this in time. So like face this shifted there. So I'm going to change this to apps time dot frame times 0 0.0024. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a weird number, but 24 is my favorite number and that's a good value too. For good speed. All right, so now you can see these um, ramps shifting over there. And I want this to be 1920 by 1920 again. A nice good resolution. Um, also, I want this to be a um, uh, nearest pixel, and we want to have a, another ramp because um, actually, let me let me show you something before. So, if we now use a threshold here um, and change the threshold to like point 0.3, we uh, now get these rectangles, they're all at the same size, and um, yeah, it's a bit boring, I guess, <laughs> and and not the kind of, um, kind of result that we want to achieve. So what we need to do is to composite this, or like multiply this, by another ramp, so like the brightness gets um, like darker on one side, so the threshold picks up less parts of it. If that makes sense, you'll see in a second. So we can use a comp here. Or really, we can just use a multiply, it doesn't really matter. And um, that's the wrong way around. So that also doesn't matter that much, but I want to have this the right way around. <laughs> so um, on this, like the, the right part here, I'm going to make this kind of like this grayish color. So you really just have to look what what color here is like s fits well. So it's really just stopping at the edge there. So something like this, I guess. All right. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What we can do now to um, actually, yeah, I, uh, this this shouldn't be 1920 by 1920, but 1920 by 1920 divided by two. So we can now put um, like uh, two of these uh, on top of each other. So I'm going to copy param uh, copy this parameter and pass the reference here. And then we can make them all smaller. Put them in here. All right. So this is what we have in the background there. Now to be able to um, just put them like, like two ones together just gonna sh quickly show you the example again. So we have one on top, one of on the bottom going to the other direction. You can use uh, the layout, layout top, and on the layout we can, um, actually I'm just gonna put both of these in there. So now we can change this align top to bottom, and um, also change the resolution here so it's going to be custom resolution 1920 by 1920 and um, also output aspect uh, resolution and now if we just use a mirror top on the on one of them and flip the X it's just going to the other direction so now we created uh, this amazing artwork. <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> all right, so on the ramp uh, two, which actually be ramp, ramp one, we can now uh, change this to create some different looks here. So like this kind of determines how how like um, 
like the width of the of the rectangles and yeah you can also turn the threshold off and then it's like these smooth uh, ramps which also looks nice but uh, for this example let's keep it in there and then again just have a look up and a and the green FX at the at the end all right so um, that's it we've created these four um, VHS animations and um, if you wanna see these ones as well I'm gonna make a video on these soon but just release it on my patreon so if you want to watch them check out my patreon page and um, also just uh, as an info <laughs> so as you can see down here I have this uh, I have a discord now so if you become a patreon uh, patron <laughs> you can um, also be part of a chat uh, chat group there's already like 20 people in there and yeah I'm just showing some stuff that I'm making we can talk about anything and you can ask questions stuff like that so uh, thanks a lot for watching this long video and I'll see you on the next one